NASA's new heavy lift rocket is finally on its way to the moon. But the rich environment is not the friendliest when the world's most powerful rocket takes off. With such a massive launch, the launch tower suffered major damage, including blown off elevator doors and charred grass and more, as it faced the brunt of millions of pounds of liftoff thrust. But how much damage was done to the launch tower, and why did NASA have to send in the Red Rescue Crew? Let's jump right into the video to find out everything. NASA launched its massive next-generation rocket into space with a roar that lit up the night sky. The Space Launch System Rocket, or SLS, launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, ushering in a bold new era for the United States space program. It also represents a significant accomplishment for NASA's Artemis program to return to the moon, which has been plagued by years of delays, development blunders, and billions of dollars in budget overruns. Hurricanes and technical difficulties both caused launch delays in recent months, including two scrubs. The engineers then managed to fix both an intermittent hydrogen leak and a bad ethernet switch in the hours leading up to the launch. And now NASA has to deal with the substantial damage to the $1 billion launch pad. The launch, reminiscent of the Apollo era, is an important test for NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return astronauts to the moon after five decades in low Earth orbit. The Artemis program was formally established in 2017, but many of its components, such as the Orion spacecraft, were developed between 2005 and 2010 as part of the previous Constellation program. Orion's first launch and the the first use of the Space Launch System was originally scheduled for 2016, but was rescheduled and launched as the Artemis 1 mission on November 16, 2022, with robots and mannequins aboard. The crewed Artemis 2 launch is scheduled for 2024, followed by the Artemis 3 crewed lunar landing in 2025, the Artemis 4 docking with the Lunar Gateway in 2027, and subsequent yearly landings on the moon. However, some observers believe that the program's cost and timeline will be overrun and delayed as a result of NASA's inadequate contractor management. But the successful Artemis's first launch is the first step toward returning America to the moon and eventually entering Mars. The mission ushers in a brand new era of lunar exploration for NASA, one that strives to unravel scientific mysteries in the shadows of craters in the polar regions, test technologies for hoped-for journeys to Mars, and encourage private enterprise to pursue entrepreneurial frontiers further out in the solar system. As China and other countries compete for space exploration, this launch highlights a growing philosophical debate about how America should pursue its space ambitions. To date, NASA has spent more than $40 billion to get Artemis off the ground. The SLS is powered by two Space Shuttle-era solid rocket boosters and a core stage powered by four RS-25 Delta engines that have previously flown on shuttle missions. The primary goal of the Artemis mission is to put the Orion capsule's heat shield to the test during the high-speed re-entry from the moon. Other primary goals include SLS rocket testing and system integration in space in preparation for the launch of human astronauts on Artemis II. The flight will also include thermal stress test in the deep space environment. Astronauts will spend much longer in deep space on future Artemis missions than they did on Apollo missions, and Artemis I will study the radiation exposure they will face in this environment. To that end, the Orion capsule contains three passengers, mannequins designed to record conditions during launch, deep space, and re-entry. However, the ambitious NASA rocket encountered numerous major issues prior to launch, some of which were potentially fatal. The NASA mission team began fueling the rocket at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, ahead of the launch attempt, which follows weeks of battling various technical issues and setbacks, including the rocket surviving a Category 1 hurricane. For hours, the fueling team seemed to go smoothly, with the countdown progressing further than the previous two launches. Then, around 9.30 p.m., intermittent leaks started showing up occasionally exceeding the threshold NASA officials had hoped to see. The leaks then forced a halt in the fueling of the tanks involved. And NASA dispatched a red crew, a group of specially trained personnel who can make repairs while the rocket is loaded with propellant. Trent Annis, Billy Cairns, and Chad Garrett were the red crew members, and they did something extremely dangerous and risky when they performed live repair work to fix a leak on a fueled rocket. It was just another day at the office for them, 
If The Office could reduce you to nothing more than a memory in an unfortunate instant, humans usually aim to be as far away as possible when a rocket is filled with propellant. In the best of circumstances, a rocket is a controlled chemical reaction that lifts tons of material into space on a fire tower. On its worst day, it is an explosive disaster that incinerates everything in its path. Their mission was to repair parts of the space launch system that were leaking hydrogen and threatening to ground the rocket, which by then had been loaded with massive amounts of explosive liquid hydrogen. The Red Crew and their handlers arrived at the launch pad in white, not red, vehicles. Three characters dressed in dark, not red, clothing ascended a section of the launch tower and started working. The Artemis 1 mission rocket should have been on its way to the moon a few hours after their brief but successful visit to the launch pad, but it became entangled in another problem. The Eastern Range, a military branch that assists NASA by providing weather forecasting and tracking data after launch, then announced that one of its radars had failed. The issue was a faulty ethernet switch, which took over an hour to replace. Following that, the rocket successfully took off. With nearly 9 million pounds of thrust, the Space Launch System rocket successfully launched an uncrewed Orion spacecraft toward the moon. But once it did fly with Artemis 1, the 322-foot rocket made its mark. Quite literally. NASA's SLS rocket is the most powerful rocket ever built by the organization. It's not surprising that the two five-segment SRBs and four RS-25 engines caused some damage at the pad. The nearly 400-foot mobile launcher at Pad 39B not only routed communications, propellants, and hardware support for SLS prior to liftoff, but it also had to cope up with the forces associated with supporting the largest and most powerful operational rockets. Elevator doors were blown off, the deck was scorched by heat, gas lines were blown loose, and a swath of grass near the pad was burned to a yellow hue. While some damage was undoubtedly expected, the teams took longer than expected to secure the pad. While the media were supposed to pick up their remote cameras on the afternoon of the launch day, they were unable to enter the pad until two days later. This was due in part to the fact that pneumatic nitrogen lines had burst, causing oxygen sensors at the pad to read low oxygen levels. NASA acknowledged shortly after the launch that debris were seen falling off the rocket, but officials maintained that it posed no additional risk to the mission. Despite those upbeat claims, reporters revealed that NASA seemed very hell-bent on them and wanted no photographing of the Artemis launch tower. And now, with these reports about how messed up it appears to have gotten, we may know why. To make matters worse for NASA, the launch tower was originally estimated to cost $383 million. However, because the project was years behind schedule and the launcher was too heavy, the project went hundreds of millions of dollars over budget. The final construction cost of the launch tower is $960 million, and it suffered significant damage following the launch of Artemis. We do not yet know the extent of the launch tower damage, but the real question is how any of this will affect the future of SLS launches, which are expected to return American astronauts to the moon in a matter of years. Let us know in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Remember, make sure to subscribe to this channel with bell notifications on if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some pretty awesome stuff here, which you will certainly enjoy. Hit a like on the video, leave a comment below, and see you guys in the next one.